All right, hello, good morning. Today we'll be checking out a video from Doke P. It is a player, uh, a content creator that I have not reacted to ever on the channel. Uh, this video is on, this is a topic that I have talked about a lot in the past. This is a big, always a big, huge red herring topic, in my opinion, uh, where people talk about the new player experience in the game. And I'm really anxious to hear a fresh take on this and hear something uh, a little more nuanced. Hopefully I get that here and uh, here we go. We all know that Planetside isn't very new player friendly. You get thrown to a chaotic battlefield that has way too much going on at first glance. It's an issue that various dev teams have been trying to fix since launch, but hasn't seen much progress over the years. I want to offer a different perspective by going one step beyond the newest player experience and explain why a lot of these changes ended up hurting the entire player base involved. Let's just start with the obvious. The That's a pretty fair take. Uh, my, to, to get it out there right in, in front of everything, my take on the new player experience in this game has always been, it has some unintuitive stuff. It doesn't explain a lot of things, uh, adequately. And over time, there's a lot of fuck around and find out as a new player, not to mention, uh, there's a lot of you got to go out on your own and learn the stuff and increasingly or you know over time the more information that becomes it's kind of a paradox in in that the more information is available to you over time it seems the less willing people are to go out and investigate on their own now there's people that come into this game with the right attitude uh and are willing to take feedback and stuff and this gets into another thing with the whole new player thing is for whatever reason, this game attracts people who are not at all suitable or compatible with what the game actually is. Uh, it attracts a lot of low-ability MMO player types who are fascinated by how many people you can put on a screen. Now, that's cool and all, but when you get into the game, I think a reason people have a really hard time adapting right off the bat and they get frustrated and angry is because they are not at all adapted or suited to playing an fps game uh, especially if you're not someone who has experience in playing in at least like you know what's been historically 64 player battlefield servers and getting used to how people move around a map or just basic fundamental fps mechanics in the first place which i find is a massive huge problem um for a lot a lot a lot of new players in this game for whatever reason uh if you're not if you don't have somewhat of a background and you don't have any of those fundamental core skills developed at all i think what the majority of those people you see complaining about the new player experience in this game are mostly what i mentioned before uh, really very mechanically poor MMO players who just come to this game for the spectacle of it. So that that's my right off the right off the rip, that is where I stand on why people struggle so hard. Number one, they're the the casual these days is lazier than they've ever been. Uh, they don't really want to learn. They've played so many games that hold their hand, specifically in the FPS genre, but uh, in some senses too in the MMO, uh, genre which this game this game has sort of like a fake mmo tag because when people's when people see mmo they expect to have like when i see the mmo tag on stuff what I, being a 20 year wow player i have certain expectations for mmorpgs and this game is either piss poor or is extremely terrible at all of them when it comes to that which is always why uh I have leaned way more into the FPS aspect of it because I think the MMORPG aspect of this game is absolutely horrifically done. It always has been. And it is some of the weakest components of the entire game experience. Hey man, play. The new player experience of straight up dying your first few hours isn't really fixable. With 80 plus players jammed into sometimes two small bases, you will inevitably run into something that takes you out as a new player. That's a universal experience, and even an extra 50 HP only prevents a few percent of those deaths 
until you slowly figure out what not to do. Yeah, uh, definitely. The, the situations that you can get in, especially being the thing that I described earlier, is that you, you have really poor mechanics. You have a lot of these people I see come into the game have absolutely zero zero mouse ability, as in they have no clue what kind of sensitivity they're running. They don't even know why that's relevant. Um, they have terrible hand-eye coordination. Just putting their reticle on an enemy in the game is extremely difficult for them. And when they get beyond that, you have the whole movement and positioning aspect of uh, of the game, of the FPS aspect of the game. You have the gunplay mechanics of the game, which unfortunately these days, if your gunplay mechanics are not put your reticle uh, on the enemy player and hold mouse one, then new players and casuals completely check out from the gunplay. Uh, and yeah, the the thing he mentions about having an extra 50 HP or whatever, the, the rel shield, the rel shield doesn't really, you know, the thing that gives you 50 extra shields just for logging in the game and being a new player and breaks, uh, breaks your headshot BTK, uh, for absolutely no reason. That really doesn't, that really doesn't help you in the long run because I've had to explain this before, but uh, on Sirius' channel specifically and in his comments and in some of his videos, there's historically, there's been talk about lowering the headshot multiplier and giving people specific uh, items to lower headshot damage on newer players. But my argument has always been that that doesn't help the player learn the game at all. I don't think you have to, it's it's kind of cliche, but you, you have to train how you fight. You have to learn how to play the actual game you're playing. Because if you're just going like, to, imagine like, I don't know if any of you bowl or, or shit like that. If you bowl with the bumpers up in the gutters that prevent you from throwing gutter balls all the time, and you get used to that, that's fine, I guess, for like little kids and stuff. Uh, or like disabled people or or stuff like that. But if that's going to be your entire gameplay loop for, you know, however long and you get used to that, that doesn't at all help you uh, when you get to actually, like, joining leagues and bowling against other people in a competition. And I know casuals and and people harp on, well, it's just a casual arcade shooter and, and it's not really a competition. Yeah, inherently, you're playing an FPS game. Uh, and you're fighting on bases with guns in against these people. Like, look at the gameplay. Uh, it's inherently competitive. These people are all competing with each other to to take this point right here. So all your shit about uh, just because you say you're just because you're not a competitive person or a competitive player or you don't have the skills to compete doesn't at all change the the game and what it is and what's happening. Like, look on the screen. These people are competing over this control point uh to take control of the base and cap it now you guys will will gloss over the fact that that's happening but yeah uh you're competing any game that has pvp combat you are in a sense you are essentially always competing with other real humans and real players so yeah why is my spacebar not working? Which is a good thing to be clear. Changes like Nano Weave getting closer to a normalized time to kill, and the auxiliary shield letting new players lift just one more bullet. Oh, we will check that out since since Nano Weave is is one of my hobby horses. And normalizing, normalizing, uh, for for the new player experience, if there was ever going to be a problem, uh, then <laughs> that's I should save that for the other video. I was specifically made to grant them a few percentages of an advantage before they figure out better alternatives. Yeah. The problem lies with many other tools that are designed to even the playing field between new players and experienced ones by being easier to use. For yeah. one, some of them are still way worse despite looking impressive, being your typical noob trap. Others will actually even the playing field, but enable bad habits to stifle improvement, and different ones are zero effort guns that basically grant free XP to get those dopamine hits, but make for unengaging gameplay both for the user and the player on the other end. I will give an exhaustive list later on, but as an example for noob traps, you've got coyotes, tools enabling bad habits are stuff like unstable ammo, and free dopamine guns are things like the thumper. Let's get back to that. Yeah, I have some friends. A lot of my friends, when I was in AC, AC was predominantly 
historically, especially in Planet Side One, or specifically in Planet Side One, an air outfit. And a lot of a lot of people in that outfit, a lot of people I played with transitioned to Planet Side Two. Uh, they played in the air. They weren't I, I, they weren't necessarily like Sky Knights or anything, or not the people that were extremely skilled in one v one, but they could hold their own in the air, and some of them were actually pretty good. And one of the the major problems, one of the the first major issues with the air in this game, uh, start. I think I guess it was around 2014 or 2015, somewhere in there when they put coyote missiles into the game. Uh, it was basically a giving shitters who are bad in the air a a real chance uh, with a low skill alternative to using a nose gun. Uh, there's no better parallel than or there's no better comparison than on the ground with shotguns and the way shotguns were introduced into the game and put in the game. And uh, <laughs> if you look further down the line, yeah, shotguns have always been a topic of contention. Uh, they've been historically buffed over time. Uh, a, a pair of them a couple of years ago, uh, the heavy pumps got normalized uh, to go with the nano weave change, and we still haven't heard the end of the crying about that. K cap ammunition, um, absolutely retarded. Why would you put that in your game? Um, that's a rel feature. The thumper, uh, all these, all these AOE damage shit. I, everything to spam doorways for people to get e easy, cheap fucking kills. I mean, yeah, K cap ammunition. I, I've never used it because why would I? The thumper. I don't. I'm not even sure I've ever used the thumper because there would just be no reason to it. But die. I, I don't know how many times I've even died to a thumper. If I'm honest, it just it, it's just something that people all these things on the screen. It, it, again, he said it's not an exhaustive list, but these are are things designed to help shitters feel good about themselves because they they can't play. They can't engage with the regular game like like for Coyote missiles. They can't they don't have the accuracy or the tracking or the ability to move around uh, as as an aircraft to use a nose gun effectively, which in my opinion is one of the highest skill ceiling uh, activities in the game of all time. And one of my, it used to be one of my favorite things to watch independent or outside of infantry play. Um, but then all my friends who flew in the air, just they complained about coyotes. Now, most of the time you can, it's the same with a shotgun user coyote. People that use coyote missiles use coyote missiles because they're bad uh, in general. Um, and same for people who have to run shotguns on the ground is they're using a shotgun because that's the choice they have to make because they don't have the ceiling or their floor isn't high enough to take advantage of just using regular guns and being good with those and, and achieving a whole lot more kill power uh, and not making yourself completely useless outside of fucking a building uh, to sacrifice getting a few cheap kills. If you're using a shotgun or a thumper or keg cap or coyote missiles, it's because you're a shitter. That make no make no mistake about it. That's why those things are in the game. And don't get it confused that the devs don't understand that or don't know that. They know that. That's why those things are in the game. Let's step beyond the new player experience I was talking about. Let's say you have a new player that gets drawn in by the massive battles and cool explosions while dying throughout it all. Spectacle. And we started to slowly figure things out. Yep. The cool back-of-the-box moments will fade out over time, and what we're left with is a video game that you play yep. by yep. engaging with its mechanics. An FPS game. So now our new player has to figure out how to keep up with the big boys that have already played for 7 or 8 years. There's two ways this can go. And it's not even like the big boys. I disagree with that framing. It's, it's just keeping up with the Joneses, if you've ever heard that phrase. And it's just keeping up with the average shitter who has played the game for a while. It's not even necessarily because we we make a fundamental mistake, and I think developers make a fundamental ugh, a fundamental mistake of trying to have shitters and casuals keep up with one percenters. I think that's a mistake. I think, and this game has suffered because of that. Uh, shitters and casuals in every game. I don't care what game it is. You're not going to keep up with one percenters. And targeting uh, development, putting items in the game, and developing specifically to try and keep shitters relevant with one percenters is always fundamentally a mistake, in my opinion. Now, what you can do is, 
if you're a shitter or a casual, you have to keep up with the Joneses. And what that means is you take the Joneses are a fucking stock average ass shitter. Right. That's what is the what is the average player in this game? A one KD slightly. Well, actually, a sub one KD general average player who plays in a Zerg fit uh, a few hours a week. Those are the people that you really should be designing the game for new players to to get along with and play with because that's generally the well no, that's that's who they're dealing with the massive majority of the time and trying to trying to give people who will never have an even footing no matter what you do rel uh trying to keep these people on even footing at all with one percenters is i think proven out to be historically idiotic, uh, a fool's errand, and ultimately bad for your game. They try to get better at the game and explore plans as gunplay mechanics more deeply, which in my opinion gives them a good chance to get pulled in and enjoy their time. Yep, it's just about, at that point, like, uh, there's that guy Nibs, Nibzerk or whatever, the former CS guy. I've had no interaction with the guy, but I've, I've checked in from time to time, and he's on his, like, his 26th or 27th game. Now, he has a, a pretty extensive background in shooters from the beginning, and I've seen this before when new people come to the game and they pick up the game, and they have a shooter background. They s succeed and do way better than any other demographic of people who comes to the game. And it makes sense because they're transitioning from a an FPS. Granted, it's it's CS, uh, and it's it's pretty, it's different from a battlefield style game, which this is. But the things that matter in CS also matter in these games. You know, your crosshair placement matters. Getting your fucking your crosshair above, you know, uh, where it, you're not running around looking at the ground. Uh, you understand that guns have. Uh, inherent inaccuracy that you have to uh to deal with and learn and the ability to master it and it's something for the most part you can do in cs uh and i mean uh, people uh, shitters and casuals have argued this for years i don't know why because you're objectively wrong they say that cs only has recoil patterns not true cs has uh a lot of logarithmic fucking spread uh as well as the recoil pattern. So this game, the, it's way easier in this game to be accurate than it ever has been in CS, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, these people come in with fund basic FPS fundamentals, and that puts them at a huge, huge, huge advantage because those skills are the skills that allow you to function and uh, achieve success in the game, especially early. Um, and then it's just a matter of getting used to how the game presents you with situations and, the, and specific instances of balance or the fact that the game has no team balancer and all this other shit that you might not be used to. Whereas on the other end, if you're coming from the I'm a mechanically poor MMO player who just joined the game for the spectacle. Now, uh, the, the uh, Doug P creates, uh, he's the, the example he is talking about here is a very, uh, optimistic uh expression of what a new player would do if they come to the game and i think the game would be better off if that was the demographic of person who was uh the majority coming to the game which there are people like he describes but in general i don't think that's how many people approach the game i think the game would be healthier and uh but most people they come to the game uh, they complain about dying a lot because they want the game to be easy for them. Uh, they want to be spoon-fed everything. They're mad because they have no mechanical ability whatsoever. Watch any of them play the game. Uh, yeah. It's totally a, a different experience. They don't really want to learn because when you try to give them advice or try to help them raise their floor when it comes to the specific mechanics or skills that matter, they get angry or they give up immediately because in other games, uh, you're handheld so fucking hard that you don't ever have to learn or improve at anything and they get frustrated and leave. Because piece 2s core mechanics are really good and crowding other players can be borderline addictive. The other way is that they stumble into one of the noob traps. 
Maybe because they asked how to get certs fast on Reddit and somebody said to spam revives and choke points. Now they're getting killed by a thumper over and over, so they think, wow, the thumper is so OP, it keeps killing me. Yeah, this is a this is kind of a big point. It's a good one to highlight too, because how many of these threads you go into and and the specific example here is like like one of these threads. Uh it's still I have a long history with FPS game, but I find the game um first of all, probably not. Um probably not the case. These people that have there's a difference between having a long history uh, like you can play games for a really, really long time, and I find that most of these people that come to this game that I've seen in these threads that say they have a long history of FPS games, um, they're generally dog shit. They've been dog shit at FPS games for really what it should say is I have a long history of being mediocre to relatively bad at FPS game uh, games in general. Uh, I hate to burst your bubble, new players, but most of you are shit uh, when it comes to... I don't mean, like, shit humans. I mean, like, your fundamental abilities to do really basic things in FPS games are are holding you back into getting into this game. And it's part of the reason why you're having trouble. Um, and that's demonstrable, because I can look at a guy... Like I mentioned, that guy, Nibzerk, uh, or whatever the fuck his name is... Uh, has a pretty solid fundamental background in FPS games. And generally, the people that are like that come into the game and they they swim. You know, they don't sink. Uh, whereas guys like this post on Reddit and say, I've played FPS games for a really long time, but it doesn't really mean anything. To me, it doesn't... I, I know to see through that now. Because I think a lot of people will read that, or a dev will read that, and they'll be like, oh, he's played FPS games. for You can't really take people at their word. Because they're just they're just saying something here. In real, the reality is this guy's probably ass uh, at FPS games, and he likes the spectacle of this game, and comes in and he's getting shit on, or like like they say, uh, revives and healing is great. But the problem is the the people that come to this game and want to sit in choke points and revive, and that's the only way they can get certs is generally. They have to look for ways to get certs that are not interacting with the other players and killing them because they have no FPS fundamentals or their FPS fundamentals are bad or they never work on them and never improve them in this game. Uh, and the revives and healing become the primary way for them to get uh, income or certs. That's the, and it, it, it turns into that's the only way they can get certs because they, when they take gunfights with people, they just lose. Uh, and that becomes how they play for thousands of hours. There are countless examples of those kinds of players in this game. It's because they never developed. This is the advice they got at the beginning of the game. Uh, yeah. This is the advice they got at the beginning of the game. And they have never... Whoever they became in the first 100 to 200 hours of the game is who they're going to be until the end of time. They buy it themselves and it's just hella boring. They assume that's all there is to the game, so you might as well play fucking Fortnite or something. And that's just a hypothetical. Players in video games will always take the path of the least resistance. True. So one way or another, they will discover any of those skill compression tools eventually, if they don't quit beforehand. Yep. In the end, the video game has to be compelling by being fun to play. Progression and skill expression yep. can go hand in hand in Planetside to make for a great experience. Yep, it's about the core gameplay loop. The core gameplay loop is why people continue to come back and play the game. It's not the spectacle. It's not bastions. It's not sanctuary. It's not orbital strikes. It's not all this... It's not all this cosmetic shit. It's not all this spectacle shit that gets thrown in your face constantly. It's not the skyboxes. It's not all of this vapid depthless dog shit that casuals focus on the the real people who've played the game for a really long time uh and and all the all the veteran guys with me here you guys know why you come back and play the game you guys know why you've played the game for so long you guys know why you have a history with this game you guys know why you love this game and it's the core gameplay loop it has nothing to do and we that has been so lost i think it's definitely one of Rel's biggest failings, and the studio's biggest failings in general, especially since 2015-ish, 
is the core gameplay loop is an afterthought for the most part. And the development centers around big, catchy, uh, visceral fucking, you know, additions for spectacle that make someone who doesn't play the game or makes a, a casual shitter go, Oh my god, soy, soy pog, oh. And that, that can buy you some time. That can buy you some players, for sure. But the players that you are buying with that currency uh, are not made of the same fabric as the people who are coming back to your game and playing it for the core gameplay loop. And I think that's a big reason why you see you see the updates, they get a bunch of players, and then they immediately fucking fall off and leave. The Bastion, the Escalation, Bastion. Now, now Bastion, Escalation wasn't just, we, we, we always forget this, but, or you guys probably don't, but there's, there's misinformation peddlers out there who want to make a big deal of Escalation and Sanctuary as being the, the core reasons as to why people flocked to that update. Of course, we leave out the being on lockdown and a global pandemic and the fact that we lost all of those players, 97% of the average daily players from that update within 30 days, 76% of the peak players. There's a cost to catering to those people that don't care about the core gameplay loop. There is a cost to being a lead game designer who doesn't participate or understand or take feedback on the core gameplay loop of your game and this game is one of the best examples i've ever played where you definitely <laughs> historically can learn the cost of ap appealing to that specific demographic but all those tools stop players in their tracks by letting them only progress their level instead of themselves as a player on top of that, experienced players can use all of those tools too, and in way more annoying ways. Things like yeah. the Thumper or Helios can be the reason new players quit when they were supposed to help them, because of how frust- Yep, and one thing these developers overall always fail to remember is that all of the stupid shit you put in the game to help the new player or the shitter uh, deal with the 1%, uh, all the one percenters can use the same shit. And that becomes a really big problem for you. That becomes a really big fucking problem for you. And one that the people in this game have struggled with for over a decade. Frustrating it is to play against them. All that to say, the players that make it past the quote-unquote new player experience are still likely not to stay around because of yep. a lot of these additions. Over the years, they've taken focus away or actively degraded the compelling parts of the game that people stick around for. 100%. And that doesn't only apply to new players, everyone's experience suffers from it. Yep. Contrary to the last video, I'm gonna go a little more nuclear in an attempt to- I mean, it's 100% it's tr it's true. It's part of the reason why players like me and all my friends who are, are deeply embedded in this part of the community, um, the you know skilled infantry player community, it's a big part of the reason why none of us are playing the game because when you when you spend time playing a game, it doesn't have to be just this game, but when you spend time playing a game and there's something to master and and you you continually learn and improve and raise your floor over time and you have a set of skills that you're you're attempting to have mastery in it it becomes almost a personal attack and it becomes very off-putting and disturbing, I would almost say, when uh developers come into that space and they whittle away the things that are essential to your you know your perceived mastery of what's going on they attempt to cheapen or make less effective the skills you have learned uh over time in an in an effort to appease a group of people who won't work for any of the things that you achieved or worked on over time it it's an attempt to, as I mentioned earlier, it's not an attempt to get the lowest of the low or the lowest common denominator, even with the Joneses. It's an attempt to knock down the one percenters. And I think, as I mentioned before, that is a huge fundamental mistake that developers continue to make. 
because at the end of the day, I've mentioned this before in some of my videos, if you have mastery in positioning and aim and weapon mechanics, uh, there is absolutely nothing that the developer can do. You're essentially immune. Uh, like, uh, you can log in. If you're actually a truly good player, you can log in and farm shitters in this game until the end of time. Uh, I've always said that. I feel that's the case. Uh, the game will inherently get more annoying to play over time, and it will be less fun uh, for you, uh, as we've seen the case being, when the developer has continually focused the game around uh, raising, artificially raising the floor of the players who aren't so good, uh, or by or by changing the gameplay experiences in the game to uh, more appeal to the lowest common denominator. Osher being a huge fucking example. Osher appeals to the lowest common denominator. Uh, and, and in fact, it appeals to the lowest common denominator player who doesn't really exist I find in the game uh, a continent based around construction and giant open field fights uh, that runs like shit that nobody wants to play on. Yeah, if you like Osher, there's a really high probability that you are a lowest common denominator player and you're probably shit at the game. Uh, I don't know why that correlation exists, uh, but I guarantee you if you find someone... Uh, saying that osher is good and it's good for the game same for people that said bastions are good for the game same for people who say orbital strikes and all that shit are good for the game now orbital strikes are a little bit different you can have your fun with orbital strikes but all those people are uh yeah you'll find that all of that content caters specifically to people who it's weird that it correlates this way they're all dog shit Wow, crazy. And it's and then people get mad at me for saying that and saying and then you have these these interviews with people or you have people in the community saying that you know, it's been a 50-50 give and take with with good players in the game or 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 some other nonsense bullshit that it, like what are you talking about? What game are you playing? Right? To fix this problem. All these tools need to be entirely removed from the game. There are net negative to plans that too. And I don't think any kind of rework is going to change that. Yeah, totally agree. But I also I also know enough to know that that's never going to happen. Let's go over them with some quick explanations. Yeah. Scorpion. The Scorpion is the pinnacle of... This, is the, this thing is the most... I don't think I've ever talked about this thing. This thing is the pinnacle of the annoying little rat shitter fucking weapon. And the fact that this is in the game makes me irrationally angry. Um sitting here trying to have a fight with someone and there's just some it doesn't it does fucking almost no damage it's just annoying as shit and it is a way for a shitty player who can't interact with the game in order to to do a little tiny bit of damage in a small area of effect at range it is so fucking annoying and it is like it is so fucking annoying i can't you're not actually like the player who's using that it, it's a noob trap it's a noob trap. It's a way for a shitter noob to get fucking hit markers that he... I mean, if he's running around with a gun, he's not doing anything. It's a way for... I, now, I describe the infiltrator in this way. It gives relevancy, although a little bit of relevancy, to people who would otherwise have none. Right? It's annoying as shit. ...of non-gameplay. Neither side of the interaction ends up seeing another player. The only feedback is hit markers on one side, and nearly untraceable damage on the other side. And it's dog It's not a farming shit. machine, it's not a tactical tool, it just makes annoying it's just stay more fucking annoying. annoying. Yes. While the shooter doesn't even need to take a tiny bit of risk. Unstable ammo and kneecap ammo. Headshots Brain are a dead. core feature of... Brain dead. And it, the hedge, uh, unstable ammo and kcap ammo are a buy-in to the gunplay for people who are shit. For people who can't fucking aim. That is... The end-all, be-all, end of story, there is no argument outside of that. Oh, it gives interesting ways and alternatives to... No, it's put in the game. Both of those were put in the game to raise the skill floor of shitters who can't aim. That is it. That is all. It's cancer for the game, and it sucks. And the people that use that, use both of these things, crutch on them hard as fuck, and they cannot play the game without them, and they suck. That's why they use it. Genesis 2 and almost every other FPS game for a reason. They increase the skills healing. And, and it's even worse in this game. 
because the time to kill is longer. So when you should be having a premium and focusing the premium skill on tracking in engagements, which is something shitters have a horrific time doing in a longer time to kill game, it, it cheapens the experience for everyone trying to play within the rules of the game. Now I get it, it's an item in the game and you can use them, but that doesn't change the fact that it is in the game specifically to help shitters who are lazy and can't fucking aim. It's in the game to artificially... You, I have to make the distinction because some people will say these things are in the game to raise the skill floor. Raising the skill floor or raising your own skill floor is something you do by learning and applying uh, the, the things that you learn uh, and the, the, the mechanics and shit and practicing. And you are naturally, organically raising your skill floor. Stupid shit like this artificially gives you a skill that you don't have. So if you took away, if you took away KCAP and you took away unstable ammo, the skill, the floor raise that these players experience by equipping those things goes away. That's artificially raising their floor. And it is the most, it, probably the thing that I hate the absolute most in FPS games. That is the one fucking thing I hate the most. Raise your skill floor organically or fuck off. Okay, I'm sick and tired of game devs putting shit into games to artificially raise the skill floor of people who are bad at the game. Being by a lot, creating more interesting gameplay and skill expression that way. For me, headshots are a big part of why the game is so fun, especially yep. the visual feedback you get from them. Yep. Unstable and kneecap ammo disincentivize headshotting and in return give you a hitbox modification or extra damage shooting. Yeah, and it's not just that it uh, de-incentivizes it. it. These people, the people that are using it are not using it because people who can aim don't use that shit, right? <laughs> so these people equip that, and then if they're not using a gun that has that, they can't function in the game anymore, and they go immediately right back to that because their ability, even if they had any ability before they started using it, it is all atrophied and they don't know how to play without it anymore. Yes. This is problematic for two reasons. For one, if you go up against a better player, those will still not help you enough to win the fight. The two times damage multiplier will always remain king. Yeah. Secondly, they hinder you from learning how to shoot heads better and lock you away from one of the most fun parts of the game. This is yeah. obviously a somewhat subjective opinion, but its gunplay is one of Planetside's no, biggest strengths. It, it is not, it's not subjective. It's not. The gunplay and the time to kill in specific fight population size settings is the primary attractor to people who actually care about gameplay. I, I, I'm sorry for the people that don't like the gunplay in this game or think the gunplay is bad. Uh, that's just a massive self expose uh, that you can't do very simple, basic things. It's relatively, it's relative there. It, I think it's almost perfect, right? Because you have a system in which the, I can explain to someone within five to ten minutes on how to aim, right? And or or how to use the mechanics or or what the mechanics do and how to how to play around the mechanics, right? Uh, it's really easy to explain. Uh, of course, as I've mentioned before, most players and I keep I keep seeing this over time, over and over and over and over over and over and over again. People complain. If you complain about bloom or spread in this game, uh, that is a massive, massive, massive self-expose. You can't complain about spread in this game when people can run around with a four, like I me. Mean, I run around and shoot 40-40, right? I shoot 40% accuracy, generate 40 plus percent accuracy on automatics in a game that supposedly spread. It, there, no, you can't. These two things cannot exist in the same space. You have someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, some shitter complaining about spread and, and all this random. I've already made a video about people complaining about spread in this game, uh, but I think it, it continues to bear repeating is that the the randomness they want to assign to the gunplay in the game is just because they're they're bad, right? They they don't have any experience in playing with the game. 
the uh, the the entire aspect of randomness and in, in a lot of games that have spread uh yeah, I have some randomness, but I have randomness in an area that I can control and I know where that's going to be. How do, that's how you run around and four dink or five dink people. And any game, any FPS game that lets you run around and fucking four and five shot people in the head hitbox cons with consecutive shots. I mean, that's some pretty goddamn casual ass gunplay, guys. And when you complain about the gunplay of the game, when you complain and specifically like the aiming and the the feel of the guns and the spread and talking about that kind of stuff not getting into the attachments and all that other stuff or the or the sound or the visual effects any of that um the very basics of it when you complain about that that is a massive self expose i'm sorry uh it is one of the most rewarding and and you know it's been one of the most fun things i've played and i and you struggle, like, even playing other games for a while. I can appreciate gunplay in other games, uh, how they do stuff differently sometimes, but this game has always had one of the, the better implementations uh, of of gunplay. Uh, and I don't... I really don't think that's subjective. I think, objectively, the gunplay is good. Uh, it's just that there are shitters and a lot of bad, poor, mechanically inclined fucking FP... Not FPS, but MMO players... Uh, who think the gunplay's bad. Like, shitters like Buildzoid, who come to the game and post on Reddit that the gunplay sucks. Like, no, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're not an FPS player. Uh, n who cares? Like, yeah, ignore these people. The gunplay's great. Thanks. So even giving players an option to ignore it is a bad idea. Thumper, Helios, and the Underbarrel Grenade Launcher. These Answer. are once again weapons that entirely ignore planetized gunplay, trapping yep. them in a playstyle that doesn't have any longevity. Only the most deranged people will spend... That right there, what he just said, what he just said right there, trapping people in a, a playstyle that gives them no longevity, right? When I made my shotgun video in 2018, the guy that I made the video on was Hedge, or whatever the fuck his name was. And I specifically mentioned in that video, this guy is a shotgun main, and this goes for any, like, cheeser, shitter gun main underbarrel grenade launcher main all this stuff i mentioned this uh specifically in that video when we were discussing well when i was talking about the depth of mechanics when it comes to automatics in the game and the fact that the depth the, there is no depth to running around with a shotgun uh, now you can do all the mental gymnastics that you want uh, and he, I even had pictures of fucking drawing on whiteboards, you know, the difference between using an automatic and the skills that you need to have and constantly be going back to and, and running while you're playing. Um, how there's just no, there's absolutely zero depth to using a shotgun besides get close to the guy and put a big circle. Now that's... That might be engaging gameplay for you if you have fucking brain damage, right? Uh, if your floor is, you know, six feet under. That might be compelling. But you know what it's not going to do? You're going to get your cheap and easy kills, and you're going to get your cheesy-ass kills. But it's not going to keep you around. It's not. And I find when, when people... People... Even casuals, man... Uh, if whatever you're playing has absolutely no depth to it one whatsoever, like th these people will eventually quit the game and it will fall off. And they've put so many low effort, low ability playstyles in this game uh, that shitters just use to to try and get certs in any way they can. It's I think it's a big reason why you see the rubber banding, and it gets back to these people get trapped in those play styles they can't there's no depth to how they play so when there's no depth to how you play there's no there's not a bunch of d different individual facets you can work on and try to build up and improve over time you just have a base really boring lame experience outside of whatever it is uh you're standing around doing and for most of these players it's standing around on points afk because they're in a blob zerg fit um yeah and look at all the people look at all the hardcore players that are still around
Mo- most 99.999% of all the casual lazy shitters this shit is designed for, they're already gone. They're already out. They quit a long time ago. And all the guys who invested a deep amount of time, now granted a lot of them have quit because they don't like the direction in pandering to these kind of players uh, and the essential fucking slow march of death that you get for a game that this that is this old. But it's a really important point to make. It's a really important point to make. When there's no depth in your gameplay, it has no staying power. And for almost a decade now, the emphasis on any depth or or building around the depth that the game already has has been ignored completely. And instead, the game has been focused on pandering to, to awful players and pandering to the lowest common denominator, pandering to the fair weather fan. Um, and that's why we, we are where we are. Now, who who's to say that the, it would be any different if we had actually built, and who knows what it even looks like to actually build the game more around the core gameplay experience, but I, I would bet fucking money that it would look better than whatever the fuck we did for the last nine or ten years. In time, quote-unquote, mastering the thumper because there isn't very much to master. No, none. As an added effect, they got spammed in choke points to make them even less fun to play. Yeah, it never... Yeah, broken it, it never made sense to me to continually, in a game that's full of choke points with a bunch of people standing in doorways, because that's that's the primary gameplay loop for the Planet Side 2 shitter, is to spawn in, run to the nearest doorway, and spam grenades or explosives at it for the next, uh, until you die. Uh, that, that's, I don't understand, I do not understand feeding into that gameplay loop. Never understood it. Launcher doesn't have to get entirely removed, but it should not be on as many weapons as it is right now. Stalker Cloak. Another instance of non-gameplay, now with even less gameplay. Stalker Cloak can have its cool moments, but things rarely shake out how you want them to if you don't know what you're doing. So it just ends up as another source of frustration for both the user and the target. I gave a more nuanced take on changing it in the last video, but just entirely removing it would work too. Heavy Crossbow. Yeah, 100%. Uh, in my the latest video I did on the infiltrator uh, class, potential class rebalance stuff, I talk about Stalker in there. I made some shitter really mad uh, about that. Some some guy who probably mains infiltrator and is a completely useless turd. Uh, I, I probably made a bunch of people mad with that, but yeah. It's a non-interactive uh, way for shitters to have buy-in and relevance where else whereas they would not have any relevance oh the heavy crossfire will only ever be complete dog shit when it doesn't one hit or too good when it does either way it's unwieldy and annoying yeah it's it that's what he described there is basically the same concept i think with shotguns and why you can't balance them in fps games because they're either dog shit and not relevant or they're overpowered and there's no in between there is absolutely no in between whatsoever uh, stop putting them in games. Stupid shit like this. The Seeker HLX completely broken on launch. Um, and then it just gets to a point of you have to you you, you want to make your money. You want to you want to make a cringe. Pretend like you don't know the weapon's going to be cringe as fuck. Um, put it in the game. Make make money off of it as, as much as you can and then nerf it. And now who, who gives a fuck uh, <laughs> for the rest of time? It's just poorly designed. Uh, bad for the game. Going to use another noob trap that doesn't need to be in the game. Construction. It doesn't interact with the game, creates unfun fights, pulls people away from the actual interesting gameplay Planetside can provide, and with the Cortium vehicle pulling. Yeah, but the point of that, the point there is that these people can't interact with that gameplay. So that's why they need construction. That's why they need the people that log into this game to play construction can't fundamentally interact with the regular gameplay of the game, which is already an extremely low floor and low barrier to entry, trust me. Um, but construction, I just don't understand why you log into this game to do that. I really don't. I'm so... It, it breaks my heart that we've spent eight plus years iterating on that useless pile of shit system. It was a mistake in 2015. Uh, B. Burnus, fuck you for, for pushing this into the game. Uh, it was a mistake then. 
and it was a mistake every single time we iterated on it and it hasn't gotten anywhere it's i don't care it's it doesn't like you said it doesn't interact in any real way with the game um i still i when i still log into the game now I, I, has nothing to do with my gameplay loop, nothing. And people are, well, if it has nothing to do with your gameplay loop, why can't we just live and let live? Because it's taken valuable development time and resources away from other things that desperately need it. And we had an entire continent that completely sucks dick and has killed the game based around that. So, yeah, it's a net negative, and I don't like it. Even though I don't interact with it and it doesn't really affect me that much, uh, I can still see the bigger picture and understand that yeah, I get it that, that some uh, overly optimistic people that worked on the game thought it adds cool new stuff to the game, and it gives alternative playstyles to shitters who shouldn't be participating in the game in the first place. But guess what? Uh, it's been a complete fucking blight on the game the entire time it's been in the game. Sorry, construction mains, like... not, But not sorry. Uh, it's cancer, it's ass, it's poorly thought out. It still sucks. There's still no reason to interact with it. And you'll never be able to get... You will never be able to jump through the mental hoop of trying to explain how it's relevant to the game. Because it's just not, and it never fucking will be. Pulling mechanic, it managed to even trivialize vehicle battles in the game. I could go further in depth here, but that would take too much time in this video. Heavy barrel and angled forward grip. These attachments, along with other oh changes... Oh my god. Oh my god. Absolutely. Heavy barrel. You, it's it like, let's see what the it Arsenal is. update took a step towards trivializing recall management in the game while giving drawbacks that are very significant but hard to quantify for new players. They aren't very useful as more experienced players will realize that movement and managing your house at the recoil are two of the most important factors in doing well at Planetside Infantry Com. Now, I think for, for a lot of people who have, for it, I think there is an overemphasis on movement from people who are generally not elite in if you don't if you don't have elite aim uh or positioning ability I I generally think there is an overemphasis on on movement um so yeah in that sense the 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 heavy barrel the heavy barrel is just a, a noob trap and the reason the heavy barrel is a noob trap and the reason the heavy barrel is dog shit besides the movement thing i don't really care about the movement thing uh i'm not i'm not a movement player and i've had insane success in the game uh you know I, i'm not really a movement player in any game but i i i do very well for myself with positioning and aim just those two things i, I don't really have to move uh, so I place less of an emphasis on that, and I think there's too much of an emphasis on movement, and that comes from people who are not elite in either positioning or aim. Now, the reason the heavy barrel sucks, and the reason it's a poor choice, is because of the weapons that it was put on. All of the weapons that the heavy barrel was put on, um, you would never need to have 20% spread reduction, because all of the weapons that it was put on have insanely fucking easy to control recoil and they don't bloom that hard uh, or they, or they have lower fucking initial values as spread like uh, all, I'm trying to think all of the weapons that now you might you might have a real trade off if the heavy barrel and what I thought was going to happen like take the Orion for example when they nerfed the Orion in Arsenal and changed its its cone of fire right back to it, it got buffed a long time ago when the orion and the sva 88 lost 0.75 their cone of fire was buffed to you know go hand in hand with that uh and then for absolutely no fucking reason uh well mainly because shitters complain about vs all the time uh the orion was nerfed uh back to i think 0.4 from 0.35 or 0.3 i don't i don't remember exactly but it was nerfed it was nerfed back again uh, for no reason. And I thought, I thought that was going to be, okay, now a, a smart person who's developing the game would be like, all right, uh, this accuracy nerf that I'm going to do, that's fine. Uh, people complain about the Orion nonstop because they're horrible at the game and they're shitters. Um, but here's, here's the deal, guys. 
I'm going to nerf your accuracy. I'm going to nerf the spread on the gun, right? But I'm also going to give you access to the heavy barrel. So you can get your accuracy back, but you're going to have to pay a penalty in movement if you want that accuracy back on the gun that all these shitters complain about. Now, I think, I don't, at the end of the day, I don't think that's a fair trade. I don't think you should be nerfing the accuracy on the gun anyway, since it's kind of, you know, okay, cool. There was a reason it got buffed, because uh, you took away one of its main fucking advantages in having .75 a long time ago. Also, again, because shitters c cried nonstop. But all the 750 RPM uh, dueling type LMGs and stuff, none of, none of them got heavy barrel. Uh, so, like, anything that would be remotely interesting... Uh, the higher RPM guns are more interesting on heavy with heavy barrel because obviously they accumulate spread faster because they shoot faster and sp spread and cone of fire is a per bullet uh, uh, increase. So as if your gun fires faster, you accumulate spread faster, yada, yada, yada. Heavy barrel would be interesting on those, even with the downside of the movement. But we didn't do any of that. Instead, we put the heavy barrel on all the most generic piss easy stupid fucking weapons that we could like okay and then the angled grip i talked about the angled grip i think a couple videos ago where initially the angled grip was going to one of one of the only uh where is it where's the graphic put the graphic up put the graphic up we realize that movement and managing your holes at the recoil are two of the most as more experienced that are very significant. Okay. The angled forward grip. Why did this get put in the game? One of... This game has very basic uh, mechanics when it comes to gunplay. You have your first shot recoil multiplier, right? Uh, you have general vertical drift. Uh, you'll have some horizontal drift. Uh, and you have your spread mechanics where you're kind of fire. Now, the angled forward grip completely or basically removes an entire aspect of the gunplay when it comes to that. And initially, the angled grip was going to be 80%. It was going to be an 80% reduction to the first shot. Uh, Okay. It, it came into the game at 60, but holy shit, 60 is a lot. Like... You are you're basically removing, and if you look at it with with the numbers and everything, and and you do the math on the guns that you're going to put it on. Something I mentioned a long time ago is, people. Some people, uh, like newer players and bad players in general, they actually do complain about the recoil in this game, which I find incredibly funny because this game has. some of the least recoil, like, actual tangible felt recoil of any game I've played in the last 10 fucking years. Like, if you are complaining about the recoil in this game, you are mechanically awful. Uh, your hand-eye coordination is that of, like, a toddler or a two-year-old. Or you have absolutely no fucking idea at all what you're doing with your sensitivity on your mouse or your something is horrifically wrong. If you think any weapon in this game has recoil at all whatsoever, there's no possible way you can have a background in FPS games. There's just not. So, to me, recoil in this game has always been massively trivial. Now, the only recoil that I think even could remotely approach, which even then I still think it's piss easy and always has been piss easy to control, is first shot. Um, I don't think first shot recoil multiplier... first Mastering the first shot recoil multiplier is an essential fucking skill because of microbursting and how you have to control your spread in this game, which is through bursting and microbursting. Because you're constantly going to keep hitting your gun with that first shot multiplier after short pauses. And this thing kind of just removes that. I mean, all it is is an assault on the skill gap of the game. 
the heavy barrel i think i think less so i think the heavy barrel is way more of a noob trap um and it's just not that necessary i don't the spread in this game again the spread in this game is not if if you can't be if you can't figure out how to get accurate in this game i don't know what to tell you this the heavy barrel is completely redundant especially the only way the heavy barrel would have been remotely interesting is if it was on more higher rpm weapons but it's not so who gives a shit um and the angled forward grip pretty much removes your first shot multiplier which is i don't know a third of the skill required in gunfight engagements but i mean uh, there's there's a reason guys why i said that i've said and maintained that arsenal update was rel's last gasp at a skill gap compression patch that's what it was increase the side to side recoil of a weapon by 10% uh doesn't really matter it doesn't especially on the guns that you see the angled forward grip being used on primarily those guns don't really have much horizontal in the first place but how to quantify for new players they aren't very useful as more experienced players will realize that movement and managing your holes at the recoil are two of the most important factors in doing well at planetside infantry combat so the attachments end up hindering a new player's progression in the long term Oh, underwater combat. Look at, look at Another shit. topic I could spend much longer on, but the very short breakdown is that underwater combat completely removes movement from the gameplay. Let's and there's not there let's let's get it straight here guys. There's not much movement in the game. There's no there's no okay. There's no vaulting, there's no sliding, there's no mantling stuff. There's no, there's really no interesting. This game, when it comes to movement, it's kind of fucking lame. And you know what's even more lame? Is somehow <laughs> you found a way to make your non movement fucking game. Even feel worse. Like when this, when like when it transitioned to the screen and the base is turned, I like actually I f feel physically ill. The first frame, when we, when he fights the heavy in the in the fucking T split hallway, I'm like, oh my god, it's so it's so ass. Anyone that thinks this is remotely good or relevant, it, you're just, it's so shit, man. It's so bad. You take. You take the, the non-existent movement and imagine, let's take the infantry gameplay and just make it worse. Like, there's got to be a point where people developing FPS games have to stop and say, does this just make our gameplay loop worse? And I'm tired, I'm so fucking sick and tired of the whole thing of, it gives an alternative way to push, shut the fuck up. Who cares? Does Is it worse? Am I making my game worse? And they can't... <laughs> they can't ask themselves, man. They, they just... Because they don't want the answer. And if you can't get to the point where you're like, this makes my infantry game worse, or this makes the gameplay worse, fuck off with the... My, my gameplay variety. Fuck off. Which means that whoever shoots it's first Who cares wins. if it's varietal gameplay, if it's just worse? Fuck off. That, together with the slow gameplay and low velocity, makes for the most unfun oh. experience Planetside has to offer right now. God. And while it might favor new players, it's not representative of any of the other fights in the game. Nope. Ground-to-air rocket launches. The ground-to-air launches should not have become default and should not no. have been buffed as much as they have been. No. It's been statistically proven but, that... The and he'll go into this, but it's... And, you know, air to ground is not something like the only time I complain about air to ground as an infantry main is when it's like a one to 12 and it's four o'clock in the morning and there's a, some fucking liberator shitter at like, like that's when I complain about air to ground, because how many times do I actually die to air to ground? Well, I mean, when I'm outside, when I'm getting fucking stream sniped by three people or, you know, 
not really that much because I run flak most of the time and the, the most people who are running air to ground in you know instead of playing infantry are running air to ground instead of playing infantry for a fucking reason okay <laughs> this change did not impact the performance of air to ground weapons at all no it has rather achieved the opposite if you want a more in-depth explanation you can check out a reddit post from Punisher Iceman what has actually made a difference was directly nerfing the problematic weapon. Big fucking surprise. Wow. The standard Dumpfire launcher should be back in its original slot, as its drop is much more intuitive and more rewarding to you. And the problem with that too is, even if you give them the tools, right? And the big complaint a lot of the times is, well, you don't you don't give new players... New players don't have the tools to, to fight back against certain things in the game. That can be anything. It doesn't necessarily even have to be air to ground. They don't have the tools to fight back. But then you give them the tools to fight back, and they still have to use the tools in the framework of the game that they suck in. Like, just because you give them the tools, they're still going to get fucking farmed. Like, like you've given them the shotgun. Like, take, take infantry. You've given them the shotguns. You've given them the fucking the rail shield. You've fucking not normalized anything from the nano weave changes. You've not done any of that. And they still get fucking farmed. Like, you've given them all the tools to be annoying little shits and raise artificially raise their floor, but... And I think pr the, the, the whole air-to-ground stuff and that whole thing, man, I, I, I've said... I, I feel... I actually do feel bad for air-to-air -air players and people who try to play the game because that whole side of the game is fucking essentially dead. And you can't listen to these people, man. Because when you listen to these shitters... It's just, just when your lead game dev is a fucking shitter and he listens to only shitter, these are the changes you get. And like you're pulling up the grabs, you have the data, and it's like, yeah, that didn't achieve what you wanted to at all. Go figure. Oh, by the way, just nerfing the thing that's killing them that they're complaining about. Yeah, that's actually going to have some impact. To use then ground to air launches. The ESF radar. Most new ESF pilots won't be aware enough to make good use of the radar and won't have the cells to invest into stealth and take advantage of it. More experienced players with fully certified stealth modules will be able to hunt I don't have and sneak much to up less aware pilots and get free kills on them. The ESF Raider essentially ended up achieving the exact opposite of what it was supposed to do. Wow, of course. Tomcats and Coyotes. These two are the absolute perfect examples of noob traps. Especially Coyotes will not win anyone a fight against anything. A nose gun no. will outperform it at any point in time, and Coyote users aren't getting the practice they need to ever catch up to better pilots. Tomcats have a yeah, one hundred percent. That they just become annoying when it becomes you know multiple people. There's that one shitter with. There's like you're fighting, and I have no experience dog fighting, but in watching good players fight, and and listening to my friends and watching them play. Um, it, it's not, it's not the coyote user in and of itself. Cause that guy's shit. Same thing on the ground. It's not necessarily the shotgun user. It's, it's that the, it's the two other guys you're fighting and you have a guy on top of that. That's not really participating in the gameplay of the game that you have to change how you're fighting around. Cause he can just do a whole shit ton of damage for no ability whatsoever. That's what's fucking annoying. And he's never going to get better at the game. And he's trapped in that play style and can't do anything outside of that. But he's like, it's just ass. It's just ass gameplay. And it's only designed to give buy-in to shitters. That's it. Venetia against bigger aircraft, but are completely outclassed by Havox. But that's not why that... That stuff is not in the game. <laughs> that stuff's not in the game to to give any depth to the gameplay. No matter what some dev says to you or tries to lie to you about that kind of stuff, you and I both know why that stuff's in the game. And they'll never come out and say it. The quiet part. Um, yeah. But you gotta call them out for that shit. And you gotta try to get them to say the quiet part out loud. That's and the still trick. out repairable. Revive grenades. This might not be a take you'd expect from me, but I'd be interested to know how Planetside would play out without revive grenades in the mix. It feels like squad gameplay and team play in general have been eclipsed by routers, revive nades, abusing deployables, and vehicle spam. I'd love to see a more stripped back form of point holding come back, and this would be a step towards that. Yeah, I think I'll talk more about that when I do my medic thing, I, which could be coming up soon. I don't really know. 
uh, that revive nades and all this other cancer shit he just mentioned. Yeah, I'd like to see a stripped back version of that. I honestly, without giving too much away, uh, I think what I've never liked is the fact that some the same person can be revived over and 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 over again. Uh, I think there needs to be some. I've I've always complained about first first it's it's much easier to recognize this when it comes to force multipliers uh the permanence of dealing with a force multiplier and by permanence i mean when you kill it there's uh some kind of time in between when you're going to see the next one uh and it, it's not just instantly chain pulled again there's no there's no permanence it's like when you kill an, a shitter flying around a 1 to 12 who's air hammering or something in an ESF there's no permanence to me hitting a skill shot or a death steal on the guy uh, it took a lot of skill for me to be able to decimate that guy who's, you know, shitting up the fight. But there's no permanence to what I've just done because he's instantly back again in another one. And in the in sort of the same sense, when you kill someone in one of these fucking cringe ass giant fights, um, depending on the situational or the positional situation, like it, it's not the same person being able to be revived over and over and over and over and over again. There's no permanence to being... There's no real way to punish people who cannot position or people who lose the gunfight. And I play such a premium on positioning. If if you fucking have shit position positioning or you die in a dumb fucking retarded place or way, you can't just keep continue to get revived over and over again. I've said a lot of times before, I think the way Battlefield handles revives, there's a deliberate action to revive someone, and if you get killed within, you know, five to eight seconds of getting revived, you can't fucking get revived anymore. You have to respawn at a hard spawn. You shouldn't be able to get revived over and over again. I would like to see that, but I'll talk more about that whenever the fuck it is I do the medic video. The goal with removing those tools from the game is to provide a less negatively messy environment for new players to enter and learn in. Back when I joined the game in 2013, the gunplay combined with the atmosphere of massive battles is what really drew me in. Even playing at 40 FPS, the game kept me interested by not being completely overwhelming, but still giving a sense of awe. Yeah, but you're still playing at 40 FPS, so what, what changed? Or when entering massive fights. I feel like the feature overload <laughs> That's, it's so pathetic. that has slowly crept in over the years won't allow something like that to happen anymore. I'd love to know how your new player experience was and what kept you playing or what didn't keep you playing, especially players that joined more recently. Until then, I'll see you for the next video. Alright, that's it for me. Uh, I will link the original video in the description. Pretty uh, All stuff that I've mentioned or talked about before on the channel. Uh, yep. New player experience, uh, the part about new player experience that your mainstream content creators never, Sirius is never going to make a video like this, uh, you know, even back when he was making videos. Zealous is never going to make a video like this. Uh, Zealous is just going to complain about fucking one percenters the entire time, every time he makes a video. But yeah, uh, first time doing a react to Doke P. Honestly, I expected, I don't know why I expected to disagree with him more, but I, there's not very much that I disagree with on this video. I might watch some more of his stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. I will see you guys for the next video. Take care.